in the United States. This is a very hot topic at this time, and it's a great, great concern that, that there are terrorists coming into the United States as, as, as part of that. Where do you stand on the, on the Syrian refugee uh, debate, and what would you do specifically to back up your stance? It's a great question because we want to be compassionate. We also want to be wise, and we have to think about our security and protecting our country. Since we know for a fact that at least one of the terrorists involved in Paris had come into Paris posing as a refugee. There's no question about that. We know that's what they're doing. We also know that President Obama's own attorney general told us we do not have the information we need to vet these people. So even the Obama administration says we don't know who these people are. Based on that, we have to put a stop to refugees from those countries until we can know who's coming here. And let me just say this. If we want to be compassionate, we want to help folks. We're Americans. We have a history of doing that. We could help those folks a whole lot more by setting up a safe space for them over there. It would be a whole lot cheaper than bringing them here, getting them involved in all the social services that we offer here. So yes, we want to show compassion. We must protect our country. Texas can say no. Texas has said no. Our Attorney General has sued the Obama administration over this. I support that. We cannot allow our hearts to get ahead of our heads. We gotta protect our families, protect our country. We cannot let refugees come here when we know they're from those areas where serious, serious terrorists are coming in with them. We have to stop that. We have to be wise about it. Mr. Lee, I believe you're next in the alphabet here. James Madison is widely acknowledged as the father of the Constitution. He said the powers delegated by the proposed Constitution to the federal government are few and defined. Those which are to remain in the state governments are numerous and indefinite. Federalism is a acknowledgement that the states are sovereign and that is bolstered by the Ninth and the Tenth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution. We have remedies, rightful remedies, to overcome a lawless federal government. When you have a government that is sending refugees at the direction of the UN, no less, into our communities, we have rightful remedies. Could you please describe the legislative remedies that the Texas State Legislature has as it, at its beck and call for pushing back against federal abuse of power? Well, I, I think the first remedy, and there's a lot of talk about it right now, I mean, the states are sovereign. We understand that. If you look at the way the state is set up, it's set up exactly like the federal government, with the governor being your chief executive officer, and then you have your, your state house and your senate. There is nullification. The states have the right to walk out and to say, no, nope, we're not going to abide by that. We're not going to do that. But nullification only gets you so much. Okay, yes, it, it lets you say, I'm not going to adhere to that, I'm not going to do that. But one of the things you said, Heidi, is you, you talked for a moment, and you talked about the rights that we give to the federal government. And a lot of people think that some of those rights are lost. They're not lost. I, I went a long time wondering about what we're going to do about this. And there's a big argument about an Article 5 convention. I support an Article 5 convention. And let me tell you why. There are safety measures involved. Okay, first of all, just to be able to get that Article 5 convention, there are a lot of steps. But the state houses have the right to limit what the Article 5 convention is. They have the right to say what the scope is and to say, this is all we're going to hear in an Article 5 convention. So it's not like you're going to open the door and there's going to be a landslide of something that happens to completely change the Constitution. It doesn't work that way. And then after you've met all those requirements, one of the things that has to happen it has to be ratified by three-fourths of the states. So there's a lot we can do. Nullification, but I don't see that this is going to stop there. The federal government is going to continue pushing. We have to go back and take the rights that were given to us through our founding fathers. They're ours, not the federal government's. And if it takes, and trust me, a constitutional convention is coming, whether it be a year from now or ten years from now. We need to be prepared for it. Thank you. I'd actually like to do a follow-up. Okay, go ahead. Because we were explaining we can do a few follow-ups okay. and dig a little deeper. Um, you actually didn't answer my question. 
Okay. Because I wanted to know what the Texas State Legislature, what the Texas Senate can actually do to push back against federal overreach and lawlessness and unlawfulness on the part of the federal government. Well, you mentioned, I, you mentioned nullification. Right. That's the first thing we can do, and that's really going to be the governor who does the nullification. No. As your state senator, we, we can, I guess, uh, as your state senator, I can write a bill, I can gain support that would be able to stop this overreach and say that we're not going to stand by and, and uphold the overreaching government and to let them violate the laws. If they're violating the laws, we have the right to step in and say we're not going to allow that. When an act is unconstitutional, it is the state legislature that is required to interpose themselves between the acts of lawlessness of the federal government and the citizens of the state of Texas. Okay. I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh. Go ahead. I'm trying to listen to you, but uh, I'm having trouble hearing what you're saying. Okay. I said the responsibility for nullification lies with the state legislature to interpose itself between a, the unlawfulness of the federal government right. and the citizens of Texas. Right. As a state senator, would you commit yourself to interposing yourself and your vote and your political career between the federal government and the citizens of Texas? Absolutely. At, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. At the expense of your own political career, if that is what is required. Absolutely. I would do that. I've pledged that already. I've said from the day that I decided to run that I would only run for one term, and I have people upset about that. I said, well, I might think about two, but never any more than that. I haven't taken any endorsements. I haven't taken any money from any special interest because I believe that I have to be unencumbered for that exact reason, Heidi, that exact reason. I want to be able to go down and do the people's work, not to have to pay back favors. So even if it means that I've ruined any political future that I would have, I would commit to that. One last quick thing before we move on. Yes, sir. As I understood your first answer, your answer to the way to solve a problem is to change the U.S. Constitution? You, you can do that, but you, that's not the problem. That was what I heard in your answer. No. No, no, no. We were talking about nullification. Now, we, we have a right to go into the Article 5 Convention. If the, if the federal government is doing something that's taking our rights, we have the right to go into an Article 5 convention. Now we can, uh, ex exactly if we needed to, we could uh, amend the Texas Constitution, but I don't think that's necessary there. I think what we need to do is just stand firm and say we're not going to let you do that. Because the rights are ours, they're not the federal government's rights. That amendment of the Texas Constitution will come up at a later point, too. Okay. I mean, we've already done it 500 times. Okay. <laughs> um.